Uh, hi, Seth. Hey, Dirk. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you too. So thanks for coming to do the uh, TEDx Luxembourg City Presents uh, Coffee With. And, uh, and so this, in this case, of course, uh, Coffee With Seth Yudoff. So, uh, so, so, Seth, if you don't mind, I'm just going to quickly give a, um, a brief overview as to how it came that, that you came to do a talk at TEDx Luxembourg City. Um, yeah, sure. No pressure. I'll just listen. You're, you're, a, you're a Las Vegas-based entertainer, former magician, and, you know, what the hell's the connection? So I, we set an assignment at the university in Luxembourg for, for our students, uh, basically dealing with networking and, and how that works. And a student came back, and part of his research was an article that you'd written and an interview you had done about uh, working in networks. And, uh, and of course, the parallel that the student drew between Las Vegas being this really tight network and then Luxembourg City being an incredibly tight network. Um, there were some really, really great uh, analogies there and comparisons between the two. And so, uh, and so I did a little bit more research into you and lo and behold, you happen to have worked together with Luxembourg's favorite son, uh, David Goldrake, the, uh, the magician who's based in uh, Las Vegas. So, uh, so fortunately, we managed to get hold of your contact details and, and you agreed to come to TEDx Luxembourg City. So thanks again for doing that talk with us. But that was no, it was a great experience. Thanks yeah. for having me instead of just letting your student do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but so that, that was in June, so almost, uh, almost a year ago. Yeah. So I guess for, for those people that haven't yet watched your, your TEDx talk, which uh, I, I would certainly encourage that they do, I'll try and link the title in the, in the description below here. Um, tell us about, about you. What is it that, that you do? So, I mean, I am a, uh, a show producer. I produce live shows and events in Las Vegas. Uh, well, not just in Las Vegas, but primarily in Las Vegas. So I have a couple of ongoing shows here. Uh, any given time I've had between, I'd say, two and six shows happening at once. But we also do concerts. Uh, we promote, you know, major major artists. Or, um, but my, my niche has seemed to be short-term residencies. But we'll just do anywhere from two to six weeks of a particular artist coming in and try to make a more, I hate to use the word, but a curated experience where it's something you wouldn't see if you saw them out on their tour uh, or something they don't even do. You know, we had Jason Alexander from Seinfeld uh, doing a one man show. And it was interesting because people really reacted because they didn't realize you could see that guy live. You know, right. it was, yeah, because they, they don't associate him with doing live shows. So, um, yeah, so it, it's pretty cool. And it's, it's, it's a way for me to bridge my worlds of touring live shows and touring music shows and uh, Las Vegas and bring all that together. So, so I mean, working in events, um, Jesus. So what happened then as soon as the pandemic hit? Because, you know, just from, from the university, it, it almost overnight shut down. Um, we couldn't have any contact with our students anymore physically, of course. So, um, you know, typically we're standing in a room with 200 students um, just all taking notes, sitting very close to each other. Of course, that couldn't carry on. So, uh, so, okay, we've been very, very slowly moving online, but, uh, but listen, you know, events, what, what's, what's yeah. happened? I mean, entertainment, uh, you know, Vegas took a very serious hit, especially because Vegas, everything we do here is based on gathering, whether it's uh, a nightclub or a, a show or even the casino. It's just all about strangers being in the, in the same room together. So Vegas has taken an extraordinary hit in terms of, uh, you know, our economy. But, you know, my world, I mean, my entire calendar got wiped. Everything from my live ticketed shows closed. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping to reopen one of them at this point, but I'm not sure what the timeline is for that yet. The, uh, I have private events, both, uh, both smaller events, but also some with some major named artists. And everything canceled, everything. And I've talked to a number of friends of mine, everyone from from big celebrities down to a Vegas lounge band, and all of them had their calendars wiped. You know, no one just, no one is certain of what the what the future holds here, and it's not just that uh, it's not just the future. It's that we have to last. So unlike a 
not like a restaurant or a store where when it's finally deemed okay to open your doors, you you might start doing business the next day. You know, shows we need time for people to um, to feel comfortable gathering in, in larger groups, to have the finances to travel or or to buy concert tickets. So I think that you know entertainment, live entertainment is going to lag well behind other businesses as we uh, make efforts to return to some form of normalcy here. Yeah, I, I can't I can't imagine in the anywhere near future or even medium term future uh, grabbing a ticket to go to Vegas. And I'm, right. sure, I'm sure Vegas lives off uh, Luxembourgers <clears throat> coming over and, and spending uh, spending a little bit of their money there. Um, so so yeah. So so what's you know what's going to happen? What, what's what's your well, plans? I mean, you know, I I am doing my best to find the opportunity in this. Uh, not at anyone's expense, certainly, but I don't want to sit here and just lick my wounds and, you know, wonder, oh my God, when will things get back to normal? Uh, my feeling is that that uh, in entertainment, but in, in most businesses, you have to assume that some form of social distancing will be the new norm for at least the next year. And I believe that there will be some um, some leftover effect of social distancing for a very, very long time. So in entertainment, what does that mean? I mean, it means venues are going to have to change. I believe venue capacities are going to drop and that will be a, a tough economic hit. We'll have to figure out how to adjust costs, certainly, to adapt for that. So that, that's an easy way to look at smaller shows, but you're also, you tend to be renting the space, the theater that holds all those people. So if you're doing an arena show for 15,000 people, you can come up with economics that work for putting in 7,000 people. But if you're in a 100 seat theater or two 300 seat theater, it's very hard to come up with economics that work at those low, low numbers because you know, you've got basic expenses, you know, electricity or, or you know, uh, the staffing that, that really aren't that high, but will eat up the bulk of those first tickets sold. So, I think that you also need, are going to need to augment your live performance with other revenue streams. So, you know, I'm looking at ideas that involve uh, creating some some online content, some like a like an at home ticket, maybe where you participate remotely. And now maybe that's more of a short term fix, just to keep an audience, a customer base, if you will, engaged. But I also think that there is going to be room for something new in the uh, streaming world because we're all at home now we've all seen everything on netflix and hulu and all the services and i'm watching all the shows i never thought that i would ever get to and um you know yes i've seen tiger king and um the uh, don't, don't, don't spoil it seth i i haven't finished you have okay i, I, I haven't I finished that one I, i'm a couple of episodes in but i <laughs> i never thought i'd be watching anything like it but listen neither did i but we couldn't stop and there was frankly there was no reason to stop but um the you know but i feel like content will have been devoured and on top of that especially in the u.s uh because i don't know how the business model works in europe but because all our sporting events were canceled, major advertising revenue has gone away, which is a lot of what the networks would have used to create new content. So you have this thing happening where content's being consumed and not as much content's being created, partly because of that and partly because we are not allowing actors to gather together either. So it creates this world in which there's a void. There's going to be a void for content. So I feel like even though uh, streaming live shows has not been a major business model before that some form of that will will be uh, part of the model and that you're going to need to integrate that into your live show economics. Uh, but, you know, until concerts return to, to normal, I mean, we were seeing a, a ton of major artists do these living room performances. And I'm just wondering, you know, what lasting effect that's going to have and where that's going to go. Are they uh, is this is this artist now? Do you see this as a as a long term change that artists are? I guess one could say that YouTube has created this platform where artists have kind of taking everything into their own hands and and making their own content, releasing their own content, that kind of thing. 
And I know YouTube is clearly doing very, very well out of, out of and these content creators are doing very well out of this, albeit um, they can't go out and do the crazy things they used to be doing. Um, they're, they're kind right, of so what happens is I think you're gonna have a change in who the content creators are and who the social media influencers are. Um, there's, there's, there's gonna be a change because uh, A, the, uh, every, everyone else has had time to stay at home and create content. You know, they, when, it, that's an influencer's job. They can take the time to come up with whatever. Well, now you have families at home that are doing fun things, interesting things, which is why you're seeing TikTok blow up. But at the same time, genuine influencers like celebrity talent uh, are also stuck at home and they are also creating interesting content, which kind of makes content from a, an Instagram model, you know, ridiculous when you can watch actual people that you, you know, whose talent you, you actually uh, have been following. So I think it'll be interesting to watch what happens in that world too. Uh, I think, there, I think we're, we're looking at a lot of changes in, in what content will be coming and then how we will perceive, uh, how, how we will attend or enjoy live entertainment. So it's interesting that uh, just coming back to one of the things you were saying, you're suggesting that this change clearly there's there's a change in the way that people are going to consume their entertainment over the next year uh, especially live events um, but I, I seem to I seem to pick up on this idea that you're saying this isn't just a, a one-year thing until the vaccine kicks in and well, until we can get I, I back think there are two things here now. yeah I think there are two issues I think first of all you have habits of customers and when you once we have let's just call it a year of some changed form of viewing content or, or participating in live events even if you're not there or attending them in a way that is not as crowded as as you're used to like some things will just make them their way into what we consider normal uh, much the way i think you know some of our stores are sanitizing grocery carts and wiping things down and uh, i think that's going to i think some of that is going to make its way into normal life in the future i believe um i mean i'm not an expert on that no one's asking me but uh the uh but i think we're gonna have to adapt like so a smaller venue uh to go back to that subject if i have a 200 seat venue which one of my shows is in a 200 seat venue then i look at that venue as perhaps something we should change maybe we take out the seating it's standing only and we remove anything you could touch so it's this touch-free environment so in a sort of casual way it can feel like you're safe without having to change the whole experience for you. So you come in with your, your group and your group stands a safe distance from the next group, but you're all, you know, you're all still stand, be able to stand there and watch a show right. and get your drink in a disposable cup that's handed to you in an appropriate manner, or perhaps that you're the one that grabs the cup and they pour into the cup while you're holding it. I, I don't know, but I think there will be things that, that will have a lasting effect and I, and I keep hearing, I don't know what you hear over there, but I keep hearing people say, uh, I know this is just for the virus, but I kind of like this environment where I don't have to talk to the delivery person. They just put it at my doorstep or where I'm not expected to, you know, hug and hug people I don't know or something like I'm hearing things I never heard before. I didn't realize hugging was so offensive to certain people. You know, it's uh, and so I do think there'll be some lasting effect from that, you know, and, and I think of some ridiculous futuristic movies I remember from, from long ago where they lose sort of affectionate interaction and things like that. And I wonder if this isn't where that comes from. Yeah, it's, it's uh, and, and certainly culturally, it's very different in different places. Speaking of which, I know you spend a fair amount of time in Italy. Is, or, yeah. Or you used to. Yeah, I'm, uh, I've been keeping close contact with some friends over there. And, uh, you know, the fact that they've been, you know, a few weeks ahead of us, if you will, on, on, on what they're dealing with has been an interesting dialogue to have. But, uh, I mean, Italians are pretty stubborn. So I understand why, why they had trouble containing this. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to, we had a trip to Spain we were supposed to do in June, which we obviously canceled. And uh, I'm looking forward to be able to return to Europe and especially Italy next year. Yeah. So, okay, it's, you know, I guess the message is things are going to change. Um, the message is things will probably definitely change in a certain way in the short term and for the next year. But 
but potentially further on. And in that lies opportunity. So, and as you say, you're, you're searching for that now. Are there any particular areas that you think, okay, there's definitely got to be an opportunity? I mean, you mentioned online is, is changing the way that we do things and you're, you're starting that. Are there any other areas or including different forms of online that, that you're going to focus on? Or? Well, I think that... I think there are there are investors that also obviously see opportunity in a moment like this, and I think that there's an there uh, that a well capitalized smaller company could take advantage of um, uh, many opportunities where larger companies are going to try to cut their expenses to uh, get back to their sense of normalcy. So in my world, I believe that means that there is an opportunity to uh, rent theaters take over the operation of a theater within a casino for example because the, then the casino can divest themselves of all those expenses uh, the operational worries the staffing of having a theater and um, because they're they're so bottom line driven that they're going to be looking at ways just to save money and keep, keep their core business on track and so i don't know enough about many other businesses to find those opportunities. But I think there'll be a lot of places like that where uh, larger companies that used to do certain things in-house, you'll be able to, as a smaller company, get in there and, and, and do that, outsource that business for them or become a partner business. Um, so I'm, I'm looking at uh, ways to do that. You know, I think the challenge here is not to, to try to get ahead of this and not to get lost in the swirling waters of confusion behind it and there'll be a lot of people that just think oh i just got to wait this out till it returns to normal and there will be some normal seeing some of those people will get back on track but i think the ones that will genuinely succeed are ones that aren't uh, in denial that the change is coming you know the other the other uh, sect of uh people that i talk to that that are confused uh is uh developing artists you know for in music and uh you know, I think over the last 20 years, we've really made the change to where artists make all their money on live performance and virtually none on uh, selling music, unless you're a Taylor Swift or something. And then, uh, and of course, then there's a licensing of the music, which is going to get hurt still by the uh, the companies that have lost the you know revenue they would have spent on that. So I think uh developing music artists are are not sure of what the what the path forward is um you know another you mentioned david goldrake you know a, as a magician uh I, I don't know how those guys uh keep engaging an audience like it's very hard magic is often a very intimate art form where you're touching people and handing things to people you know when you're doing close-up magic or even if you're doing stage magic it's one of those things where you know anyone on TikTok can make something appear in their hand. Like you need to see it live to be like, okay, there's no camera trick here. This is just amazing. Mm -hmm. And how do you do that if you aren't able to get enough audience or if your audience is sitting further away and they're like, it, like there are so many factors that aren't just, can you do a show or not do a show? So uh, I'm talking to magicians that are really trying to find a way forward. Some are, some are jumping on online. I don't know that that's the, the way forward though. Um, I think that's very limited uh, entertainment value compared to other things you might watch on your screen. So, so yeah. for, for, I, I don't know about you, but my couch is getting worn out from sitting in front of our, our, our big TV. I mean, you know, and we're not a major TV family. Like we just don't watch a ton of content normally, but we, we certainly have planted our, our asses firmly in the living room to watch as much as we can. So I think watching a guy, that I may not have seen before do close-up magic on my TV, it's just not going to be as engaging as some of the other content that's available. Right. So for, for, the, for the audience, let's say the Luxembourgish people that, that might be watching this and, uh, and, and, and broader, I guess, it's, it's going to be online. So let's say TED fans. Um, do you have any kind of message um, that you'd want to get out there for the people that are you know, not just magicians, but there are a lot of people that are upcoming artists. There are a lot of people that are confused right now. There are a lot of people that are uncertain right now. It's, you know, what, what's, a, what's Seth Yudoff's message to everybody out there? Well, I think my message is to innovate and integrate. Um, 
this is not a catchphrase I had. I just came up with that. Um, but I, what I mean is to that to change up your your perception of your business model, if if it needs it. I mean, some don't obviously, but and to consider integrating your current business model with something else either that you do that you thought was was separate or that someone else does. You know, and maybe working with other uh, other businesses, you know, where they're having a problem and you're having a problem. Maybe some form of working together. You know, I, I've been talking about uh, you know dinner dinner and a show packages, but like an at home version where you have food delivered that goes with the show that you know. And you know, is there something like that? And do the, the two companies that do that do they make sense because they it's because it's from a casino. It's the chef from a casino with their main show of a casino and. You know, there, there are ways, and again, that might just be about accessing a fan that doesn't want to travel to Vegas quite yet, but keeping them interested so that next year they, they will. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, I'm seeing, uh, yeah, I, I, I am, uh, I just made a, I sent some emails out this morning. There's a, there's a, a company that does some online stuff that I'm fascinated with, and I've had a similar idea for a live event. So I'm wondering if we work together with my expertise in the live shows and their existing customer base and their expertise in, in that online streaming uh, content, which isn't necessarily entertainment the way they do it, uh, that we could work together maybe and do something that's very interesting that helps both of us. Mm -hmm. So uh, that may not work out, but I think that approach is, is good for any entrepreneur, but certainly someone in entertainment. So the message is innovate and integrate. Yeah. All Sorry. right. Then I followed up with a very long-winded explanation. Know, so. but, but that's but that's it. Now that's going to be a quote. That's a Seth Udall thing. Innovate. All right. Love it. Sure. I'm sure Seth, it's someone else's. But listen, <laughs> we better Google that quickly just to make sure. Uh, Seth, listen. Thank you very much for uh, spending the time having some coffee. Although we didn't really drink too much coffee, but uh, I, I actually drank most of my coffee. So. Okay, fantastic. So, uh, but so thank you very much for taking the time. And uh, and listen, I look forward to, uh, to seeing you soon. And who knows, maybe online or however, uh, however one of your events end up working in the next in the next little while. Thank you, Derek. Thanks for including me. Great to great to see you. He healthy over there. And, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, and take care. Uh, of I, I enjoy these talks. So if I can ever participate again, please let me know. Talk to you soon, Seth. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.